green male. So on the release aspect of this test, uh, uh, he did really well. Uh, he didn't take too long to come out of the enclosure, even though he was a bit quiet in nature. Uh, he was uh, a little whimpery. Um, he has a nice like body height. It's not like he's like cowered low to the ground, but his tail's not active. It's not tucked between his legs, but it's just hanging limp. So he's feeling stressors. Um, this is the first time he's been taken away from his litter mates, which there's 10, and uh, dropped in this room and he's never met me before or been in this room. So that's pretty huge for a, for a little pup. So he, he's just not sure what's going on right now. So the fact that he was able to push through and come out is a, a nice uh, display of confidence really, even though it was quieter in nature, he didn't come running bound into me or anything. But um, lots of puppies just lay down and I can't, they don't come out. I, I have to really help them come out. Uh, so this is really, really good. I don't, I don't speak because my voice encourages him to come to me. Um, so it was all his decision. So I'm just going to say hello and let him know I'm good. But I'm not going to encourage him to stay with me. because. We want to see if he is more socially focused or more environmental. And we tend to look at uh, like how, how often does he leave me? If he leaves me, does he just settle in with me? Um, he's uh, very gentle. But you can see on the video that he has a body stretch. So that's him. Um, being careful because he doesn't know my feet or those balls and he's just leaning into it kind of carefully so that a careful side is a nice side. What do you think? Yeah, what do you think? So his actions here was really for me to like pick him up. Um, but uh, I'm not going to. <laughs> so he is feeling a little bit uncomfortable and he doesn't know what's going on. So we're just going to give him a few minutes uh, to see exactly what he chooses to do. So he's got the whole room. There's toys and, uh, you know, it's not a huge area, but it's big enough for him to go and look around. There's that stretch again. He doesn't know what that is. So the careful side is quite nice because um, 
he's, it, you know, he's giving thought, and being thoughtful is pretty good. And uh, he's most likely not going to jump into a bush and come out uh, with porcupine quills or something, because he's going to, like, think about it first. You can see on the video that he is getting a little more active. I'm hoping that you can still see. Again, the body stretch, so this is, like, continuity. So, I don't know if the video camera picks up, but there's tiny, tiny little whimpers. It's not like he's screaming, crying, but he's, he's got a little whimper. <laughs> what are you doing behind me? I keep moving. I keep moving. Yay! Ow! Ow! So he is using his teeth on my, uh, my feet. So there are uh, no teeth on skin exercises that he should understand and you should uh, work with him. Uh, it's very important that they learn at a young age. So they, you know, there's exercises and make sure he understands what you're wanting. Uh, really like scolding or physical punishment. Uh, they don't really understand. Uh, they, don't put the, they don't connect as to why they're getting punished. Um, redirect his focus and do your exercises to teach him no. Um, you can scream like a puppy would or his mom would. So at the beginning when he came out I would have thought he was more socially focused. Um, but now that he's feeling a little bit more comfortable he's not really coming back to me very much. Uh, he does come back, and uh, he's quite happy when he's with me, so there's a nice social side. But he is leaning towards an environmental puppy. And neither one is uh, better than the other. It's just how you, you know, what you concentrate your exercises on, and you get him to watch, uh, watch me and come, and, uh, to, you know, develop a bond with him. He's quite curious and playful, which is really nice. And I'm sure you can see his tail now is up and over his back and starting to, uh, to wag a little bit. So at this point, I would have to say that he's leaning uh, definitely uh, towards an environmental uh, puppy. So we're going to do a little exercise where I start walking around and let me just see how interested, what comes naturally to him. So you can see that once I'm up and moving, he is uh, following me around really well. So, puppy, go. puppy, 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 yes, 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 puppy, puppy. Yes! Good! Good boo boy! Very good. So he, you know, he got excited when I started walking around. Uh, but now he's still sniffing. So I'm having to encourage him to follow me. So that again is the environmental side. So this exercise is a great uh, exercise in a building uh, bond. It's good for uh, also starting your come, for the dog to come to you. Um, so basically we would get him to come. And I'm going to give this little fellow a treat because I want to really reward him for coming. Yeah? Did you get it? It's on the ground there. So uh, basically you would do this kind of exercise in a, in a small room like this and then make the room bigger and then maybe outside, take it outside where there's uh, squirrels and kids playing and noises and uh, make sure you've established um, the bond so that, you know, it's called checking in because he should want to check in with you. Puppy come. Puppy come. Puppy come. Good boy. Look. Right here. 
<laughs> oh dear. We didn't even need it. So we're going to keep doing it. So yeah, a lot of people take their puppy, you know, yay! take their puppies to a big park and it's overwhelming, like the stimulus is overwhelming, and they haven't put in the time to do this exercise. <laughs> How can I reward you if you won't even settle to take it? Look. also use maybe my verbal uh, padding is going to be enough. Yes! Good boy! Good boy! So the more excited he's getting, the more he's using his teeth. So keep that in mind. It's, it's uh, puppies, you know, puppies are puppies and they just have to be taught. I'm not really taking my treat. But you can see that he's getting the habit of following me. Yay! Yay! So what, he's thinking it's a big game, which it's supposed to be a big game. So build on this uh, till he understands uh, the come, and he actually really wants to know where you are. So ideally, you know, you want your dog to be able to play with other dogs and people. Um, but they also should be looking out for you. It's not up to you to uh, only be chasing him. He should also, you know, play with some dogs and then come back to you and then go play again. That's ideal. Ow! 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 So, we do, like, give him the message that that's not good. Give him something that you want him to uh, chew, like a bone or whatever it is you choose. Redirect his energy. Puppy, puppy, puppy! Yay! So, as you can see, he's wiggling a little bit. So he's not sure why I'm holding him up, but uh, he's not really accepting of it. So he needs a little help with this. So basically you just do the exercise and uh, increase the time held. Hey! Hey! So he is, uh, you know, they do spend a lot of time at the, the groomers and the vets. And uh, you can't be with her, him 24-7. So. It's important that they have... Ow! Ow! They have... Uh, we don't really try to train this out of them <laughs> during the assessment. We just want to see what he's going to do. Ow! So he's really interested in my feet. So keep on top of that with him.
very good reaction that time. I was right in his face. <laughs> so keep on top of it because you can also like slow your energy down. Like I'm trying to get him to play, so I'm getting him excited. This uh, puppy might need to have kind of like a little timeout exercise where you play with them and then stop, let him relax, and then continue playing. But it has to learn to uh, control that energy, even though it's a lot of fun, isn't it? So we've already given him a treat so we know he likes it. But we do a little treat test just to see if he, get, if he can hold his focus uh, because it's a, a high reward to treat and he hasn't had anything like this. He's only had puppy food. So what I'm going to do, Bo, is hold them <laughs> back and put treats out to where he can see them. Look, can you see those? So this little fellow knew exactly what he wanted and he was able to t knock off the cup and eat the treats uh, relatively quietly so that was a really 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 good job um, he's you know smart yes but um, just watch so it's really counterproductive to feed them a treat that sends them over the top and gets them too excited because you can imagine if that's all he can think about getting and you're insisting he sits or stays. It's really kind of hard. <laughs> so make sure he understands it's a treat for a job well done, but it doesn't send them over the top. So that's the, uh, that's the goal. So there's a little agility puppy there. <laughs> so he has a lot of energy and he can't, he's probably a good candidate for a sport. <laughs> So there was a fairly big noise uh, unexpected from behind him and uh, we expect them to um, react. It's how he recovers is important. So you can see that he's not sure what that noise was. He came to me, he's crying, he's sitting, not leaving. So first off, uh, we can help him by doing this kind of exercise and increasing the no, noise level until he's taller and top it and uh, the last thing to do is to not coddle him because we want him to learn to handle it himself we don't want him to rely on you forever confidence this is just like a level of confidence so instead of picking him up and saying oh you poor thing you're scared I'm gonna get walking and I'm going to just start playing, and I'm going to redirect him, and we're going to just see what happens. Yeah? What's in here? Can you go inside? his uh, tail is up and he's still you know kind of going at my feet <laughs> he's not the same puppy hey you got, you got your tooth caught in that 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 he was before so really uh, you know do those sound exercises okay and uh, build it like build him up to an acceptance level and it goes with everything it's not just sound like if he's scared of anything, it's just a, a, a nice introduction and slow repetition. Wow. Brave puppy. What's that? Look up. No. <laughs> Very good. So he's approached it a few times, he's not really afraid of it or anything, which is really, really good. There's no real issues there. Um, so just keep introducing lots of new things to this little guy, just uh, new colors, new sounds, and uh, 
just you know enrich his life and and give him lots of different uh, opportunities. <laughs> What's this? Oh, I put it right in your mouth. Because <laughs> you were too busy. So, we do a prey drive. So this is uh, like an innate quality. It's just part of him. It's what he's born with. He was a very interested right from the start, and he has a fairly high prey drive. So when I say that it, it's innate, it kind of overrides. Uh, I've seen puppies that are almost shut down and uh, you know not playing with me, but the minute I bring this out, they're they're running after it. So it just sort of um, it's how you train him. <laughs> How you train him, so you're going to concentrate on the exercises like watch me and drop it and leave it and come. Everything that can redirect his energy back to you. And, and basically it's just, uh, it's so that he doesn't get the chance to chase porcupines and squirrels and stuff. Like you're going to really work on that with this little guy. <laughs> so overall he is... Uh, I have like a, a bounce of energy, so he's lovely. I hope you enjoyed this little guy. Yeah, you did a super chat. <laughs>